Hello, my name is Alex Detlefson. I am a third year chemical engineering major. The purpose. The purpose of the lab was using Newton's second law in a computational model in order to predict an object's position over a set amount of time. We were also comparing a real world motion to a three dimensional model and we took concepts we learned from class and applied them to everyday motion. For this lab, we were asked to observe the motion of an object that is moving at the same speed and same direction. We were then asked to capture video and analyze this using the tracker software. We found the object's position and corresponding time. We were also asked to make a computational model of this motion. For my report, I captured the motion of a car driving along Highway 75. In order to calibrate this, I went online and found the average size of an SUV. Because I was not there and had no possible way to measure this on my own, the measurement I used may be slightly a little bit off, but it shouldn't be too large to corrupt the data. As we play my video, I notice that the car moves in the negative x direction. If I had flipped this axis, the velocity would have been flipped as well. The speed would have stayed the same because it, because it is simply the magnitude of velocity, but now the car would have been moving in the plus x direction instead. Now before I can make a model to show the car's path, I first had to find the initial velocity. And I did this by using the formula delta r over delta t. I found the first two initial positions and the first two initial times. And I found my answer to be 23.85 meters per second in the negative x direction. I then converted this into miles per hour. This wasn't required, but I wanted to make sure my data was making sense. The speed I found was 53.35 miles per hour. And this makes sense because the car was traveling on a stretch of highway that was high speed. Now, assuming that the car was moving at constant velocity, I am able to assume that the force is zero. Now, using Newton's second law, I am able to predict the end position of my car and I'm able to construct a 3D model. Now, in order to construct a 3D model, I used the code written on the left. I inputted the initial position and initial velocity I found in my calculations. And when you hit run module, you get a graph on the right. This graph has a steady slope, meaning that it is at constant velocity. Now, putting the two together, I created a position versus time graph using the computational model data and the experimental data I found using Tracker. The experimental value is in blue and the computational model data is in red. And as you can see, the computational model has a constant slope, meaning it has constant velocity, while the experimental value has a slope where it's curving downward. This means that towards the end of the video, the car was actually speeding up. Because the graphs differ, there are several possible sources of error. For one, real life velocity is not constant velocity. I was simply assuming that the car was traveling at constant velocity. However, it is very possible that it might have been slightly speeding up. Secondly, there might have been some tracker errors. Because it is almost impossible to tell the exact middle of an object, there might have been some differences in between each point. Also, because I was not filming on a high definition camera, the object might have been changing its shape. Now, my calibrations could have also been off. Because I did not go out and measure the car myself and was simply going off the internet's average car length, the calibration was probably off by a little bit. For my analysis, I was assuming that the net force was zero. It is it possible? for me to say how many pushes and pulls are added together to give zero net force in the case that I observed. I would say that this is possible. However, in order for me to do this, I would have, have to have some sort of measuring tool in order to determine the amount of friction, the amount of wind resistance, gravity, and every little force that was impacting the car. So, doing this from my window, I would say this is impossible. But if I had the right tools, I would say this is possible.